System one loaded. Booting up system. system. Loading. Gabriel Valentini. Loading. Dan Brozo. This is the Digital Lizards of Doom show live at Meltdown. Meltdown. What's up, guys? This is the Digital Lizards of Doom show, live at Meltdown. My name is Gabriel Valentin. I am here with the ever-amazing Dan Brozo. Thank you. What's up, dude? Not much, man. We're doing a show together. This is really exciting. This is our first ever episode. Ever show. Working on... Saying words correctly (laughs) in order. (laughs) Yeah. We are going to get to our really cool interview a little bit later. Yeah. Do we say who it is? We say who it is. We definitely. Let's do it. Who is it? At the same time. One, three. Two. You count up, I count down. <laughs> it's Mike Towery from, Mike Towery. from Comic-Con. Yeah. And San Diego Comic Fest. We just wrapped up with him, so we're like a little goofy right now. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. We shot this out of order for, for scheduling reasons. Yeah. If you don't but, understand, that's okay. Um, welcome to the show. Yeah. You're going to hear and see a lot of nerdy stuff right now. So yeah, we apologize in advance. If you're not into that kind of thing, you're more than welcome to keep watching. And if you are into that kind of thing, you are in the right place. You uh, could just mute it and look at Gabe because that's what I would do if I wasn't into that stuff. Listen to this, stud. Yeah. So, thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. So dude. Um, for those of those people out there who don't know uh, what you do, we should get into what you do first, right? Why? Because this show is, is, this is your namesake, man. I guess. Yeah. My baby. It's your baby. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Digital Lizards of Doom is Gabe's band. And if you haven't seen them perform, uh, you need to go do that right now. It is a multimedia experience. It's like, it's like a 4D experience. It is. It is like a yeah. 4D. We don't shoot fire or water, though, at I mean, the crowd. Something you like need to work on in the future. Yeah, we should get some. <laughs> we do have, I know what we do. We have uh, Nerf guns that shoot out into the stage. That's so. very true. That's so there's cool. like a splash zone of sorts. It is. It's yeah. like that wipeout show. No, it's not. I'm yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you have to go through an <laughs> obstacle course when you go to his shows. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool time. So open a new tab right now on mm-hmm. YouTube mm-hmm. and go type in Digital Lizards of Doom on Google. Cue it up. Whatever. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And then you can come back to this later. So. Or you could play it softly in the background Yeah. while we do this. Add some ambient noise. That'd yeah, cool. totally. So, yeah, I uh, play in a band, Digital Lizards of Doom. We also have a graphic novel coming out with mm-hmm. a title called Digital Lizards of Doom. Yeah. And these are our characters, our two main characters. That's Commander X. Yeah, He's which evil we're robot blocking right now. Hell bent on taking over the world and this is uh dizzy doom he is a uh, hero who has electronic powers and capabilities pretty cool stuff so is um, dizzy doom is he he's the digital lizard of doom i mean you don't have to yeah, get into the yeah, story like, necessarily uh, but he is. He, he i've is. always wondered he's that the, he's the new one and that might okay. make sense but it will in the it will once you read okay. the book so the book will be coming out this summer. So he's kind of like a like a Luke Skywalker in this world, he where there's an old order yeah. of we don't okay we don't need yeah, to get no, it exactly yeah, yeah okay 100%, okay 100%, okay so yeah the sweet. graphic novel coming soon this will all all makes sense I always make things too complicated that's why I need you Dan because okay it's just like boom 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 analogy so, boom so. Okay. Yeah. And now, that was a nice segue. Well, I'm kind of Yeah. yeah. So, cruising <laughs> over to Dan now. So, um, tell me, I'm going to interview you now. Okay, I'm sure. Mike Towery, no big deal. I'm going to interview yeah. Dan Brozo now. Sure. Um, so, give the people a little bit of background on what you do, especially for the nerd community, too. Yeah. Um, well, the... The main things that you may possibly know, this is on the internet, so it's not locked down in terrestrial radio land. Um, I am a DJ at a radio station in San Diego. That's one of the things I do. More importantly, though... Can we say or can we not? Yeah, it's FM 94.9, the alternative station in San Diego. It's all about the music. Exactly. Yeah, that's the tagline. (laughs) It's about the music. Um... Uh, more importantly, in this realm, however, is uh, I do a podcast called Battlecast, um, where we take characters, f- 
generally fictional, sometimes non-fictional, and we do a very loosely role-playing, like semi D and D ish, but it's like no rule sets or anything like that. It's just free form. It's improv, and we do like a role-playing battle between them. There's rules. Yeah, there's rules. But basically, there are four people on the show. Um, the three of us, um, me, Andy, and James, are the three like main co-hosts. Um, we rotate between whether or not we're battling or we are adjudicating, which is kind of like the dungeon master. And uh, then the other guy, Dirk, is our researcher who calls BS on stuff if we get out of hand. Yeah. So oh, Dirk. Yeah. I love Dirk. He yeah, Dirk's here. my favorite part of the show. Yeah, Dirk was helping us set up. Shout out to Dirk. Thank you, you Dirk. Shout out to um, Dirk. So yeah, we've been doing it for about a year now we got a pretty decent following um a really nice following yeah yeah, yeah. great show. we're we're blown away by it if you have not checked out battlecast go right now open a new tab a, a new new tab within that second tab open a newer tab yeah i was googling you guys this morning yeah, yeah it's cool morning, it's cool and um you can actually it's really easy to find battlecast um, just type there's another thing called cool. battlecast it's like a League of Legends thing, but they haven't been doing it in so long that like we kind of just like usurped the name. Come up, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Somehow our SEO got better. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that didn't come up online. Cool. So I don't Facebook, even you can just search Battlecast. Yeah. Just kidding. Who would? <laughs> um, yeah. Facebook forward slash Battlecast Show. Twitter uh, dot com forward slash Battlecast Show. Everything's Battlecast Show. And Battlecast show. we're even on uh, we're on Snapchat now. Yeah. So once in a while we send out a snap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and BattlecastShow.com. You guys, you guys, we've had a couple of cool guests on too. Entertainment, high quality. Yeah. Um, you guys had you guys have had some pretty cool guests. Yeah, we've had a, yeah. probably the the biggest name we've had is the lead writer for um, uh, Epic Rap Battles of History, Zach yeah. Sherwin, yeah. who is also a stand up comedian who does uh, comedic raps, and he is incredible and so talented and so nice. Zach Sherwin, you rule, dude. You rule, um, Zach. Yeah, love that dude. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's been a good run so far, and it's we're stoked on doing it. And probably the most flattering thing that that has happened with the show is that when somebody listens to one episode, they typically go through and listen to all of them, cool. which is like super duper flattering. Like, oh, that must mean you enjoy it. Awesome. And a lot like the first section of the show is usually me telling super embarrassing stories about my life. So <laughs> the best part you'll hear like more about me than like my mom even knows if you listen, and it's just like it gets pretty. It gets pretty raunchy at times. Yeah, be prepared for that. It's quite raunchy. You got you guys have a disclaimer though, right? Yeah, a little yeah, bit. A little. But you kinda just have to know. You yeah. just dive head first into the gotta be cool. the bodily fluids that is <laughs> Battlecast. Yeah. You gotta be in on the end. For so. sure. But yeah, thanks for thanks for bringing that up. Of course. Man. Yeah. Um that's the only reason why I wanted you here, actually. Because because of the podcast. I'm just brag, like, I got Dan Brozo from <laughs> Battlecast. All right, all right, enough of that. Enough of that. Yeah. It's getting weird over here. But yeah, so um, on to news. You had a couple things. I did have a couple up. things. Oh, you know what we should do? You know what? Hold on. Pump the we should do a break. dance move or something? Yeah, we should do a dance move. Okay. You no, know, let's go into a little bit of like a mission statement because this. Oh yeah, the first definitely. Episode, so definitely. Obviously, no one knows what this is about. What the D Light Show is all about. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the main things that we want to focus on with this show is um. <clears throat> bringing together three very important art forms, video games, comic books, and music. And uh, one of my things that I've always struggled with uh, doing music and doing other events, art events, comic book events, is that I've never seen all three of those come together in such a cool, uh, pure way. And that's what we're really trying to do here because yeah. uh, he's way into the music scene. Um, with He has a local radio show on 94.9. I'm way into the music scene. I have my own band. We play with yeah. bands. Um, we're both total <clears throat> nerds. I mean, I think I was at your house one time. We, we geeked out on uh, Star Wars until it was like 3 or 4 in the morning. Yeah. And I, I was trying to leave for like four hours because I had to get. And I thought you were leaving. I was like, "Is he gonna leave?" Nope. On to the next subject. Yeah. yeah. I still have. Have you watched Clone Wars yet, Dan? <laughs> no, I need to. I really need to. But um, so yeah, so we really just want to have the show to kind of promote all these different art forms and yeah. show how important they are. And these uh, these things are so important in our world. Independent arts in general. 
a lot of this really cool stuff is going on that a lot of people don't have access to and they don't know about. So we're using the DLAD show to just give a platform to so many different art forms of independent uh, artists. Exactly. So, and you know anybody? showing light on the little guy more more importantly yeah. than anything else. We're going to focus on the big stuff. We're going to talk about, we're going to get you got to Marvel stuff, some you got to stuff, some dark horse stuff, but still, if you know anybody that deserves a spotlight, hit us up, let us know, say, hey, you know, my friend's a comic book artist, or my friend makes independent video games, or my friend does something cool that, you know, is benefiting the nerd culture yeah. world. Hit us up, let us know. We'd love to have them on the show. We'd love to get their stuff seen more often. So that's really important to us. That is that is the main reason uh, we're doing this. So, um, totally. A little bit. So, All right. Let's talk about some news. Let's talk about some news, man. You go first, because I think you were really excited to share something with me. All right, so the first thing to talk about, which is kind of kind of a huge deal, that uh, Marvel and Sony have been talking yeah. about what to do with Spider-Man for a long time, how they're going to deal it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you got so... updates for me? Yeah, I mean, update as of... What is it? Today is the 10th? The 11th, or, Yeah, well, let's not say the date, actually. So, <laughs> beep, so, beep. We'll just beep. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what day it is because we don't know when this is getting released yet. Um, so, Spider-Man has officially joined the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Awesome. Which means that we could see something like Spider-Man in the Avengers. You told me it was going to be good. That's really cool. We'll see. Awesome. We'll very well see. I I don't think I'll, that they'll make an Avengers movie that is not entertaining and fun to watch. Yeah, definitely. You know? And that's all I want out of those movies. I'm not trying to be nitpicky, but the last one was amazing, and they did leave out a ton of stuff. Again, not yeah. being nitpicky because they pulled it off. It was fun. It was enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. It was very exactly. Cool. So basically, what I thought that meant at first is that um, Sony was done making the Spider-Man movies, that Marvel was completely taking over. That's not the case. They're going to be, like, tag-teaming it. So Marvel has the ability to use Spider-Man in their movies, but Sony will still be making the, the following, like, Spider-Man movies. Movies, you know, what con- like that's what I've kind of been saying. I'm okay with that. Yeah, just do that. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, that's awesome. And I wasn't a huge fan of the of the last Amazing Spider-Man. Um, again, I enjoyed watching it. It was a fun movie to watch, but there's some things about it. Like I, I don't know. How is it too late to, or is it too early to drop spoilers on it? Has everyone no, seen it? Has everyone spoiler seen it that alert. is going to see no, it? This is what you do. Yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. For sure, spoiler alert. The death of Gwen Stacy was so anticlimactic to me, man. I was like, this is one of the hugest things in his life and like what drives this character. Are you and saying you didn't, you didn't feel like you cared enough? Did not her? care even close to enough. You didn't care And like how the her? scene... You didn't care enough about that she was dead. Either. Wow. Either. I mean, I liked that character a lot, um, but... Just how it happened. Like, I saw it come in from a zillion miles away, and of course, it's Spider-Man, so you know it has to happen eventually. You, you know, but, it's really interesting. It's funny you say that, because I feel like with Spider-Man, the problem with the first three Spider-Mans, Sam yeah. Raimi Spider-Man, love them to death. Love those movies. Again, very fun movies. Yeah. Very fun movies. Yeah. Um, and did so much amazing, incredible stuff for the Marvel Universe in general. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I feel like the relationship, the love interest between Spider-Man and... and um, his Mary his, Jane, his, yeah. Uh, well, Mary Jane in, in that case, and then now yeah. the new ones, it's Gwen Stacy, which yeah. is, I guess, technically the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, they just, they didn't get it right? Because, I mean, here you are saying you didn't really care, and I kind of felt that way, too. I was kind of like, yeah, I mean, Spider-Man, you know, he has Gwen Stacy, but what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. That, so that'll be really interesting to see when, what happens when they bring in Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. Maybe is it gonna get all like Christopher Nolan-y and all dark and brooding? Like, well, maybe they did that on purpose. Now that I'm thinking about it, because you you brought up a good point. Huh. The whole Gwen Stacy thing. Maybe it, like they're doing it like, ah, see, you don't really care about her, so it wasn't meant to be. So yeah. When they huh. introduce Mary Jane, huh. I'm speculating. I could be, be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> just to mess with us. Because aren't they dating in real life? Andrew Garfield and Emma. Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Is that her name? Thompson or Emma. Emma. Watson, Emma Watson, something like that. Emma something. One of the Emmas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if they're dating really, or is this going to turn into like a celebrity gossip <laughs> show? They're cited at a hot <laughs> nightclub in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, no, it, it who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're just method actors, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> she got killed off. Anyways. <laughs> I could have gotten dark. Um, so what? What do you have to talk about? Okay. You, had, you had something too, and then I'll, I'm going to close out with a very controversial thing to say. Really? After after we talk okay. about what you're going okay. on, yeah. So there's a little bit of news, and this is gossip. So gossip. We're warning. going back okay. to the Hollywood thing, okay? 
Um, no, not celebrity gossip. Okay. This is okay. Star cool. Wars gossip. Star Wars mm, gossip. Okay. So by the time this airs, because I think it's going to be a couple weeks, by the time this airs, yeah. maybe this will be confirmed, maybe it won't. Yeah. Either way, we'll find out if it's true or not. But um, Billy D. Williams was seen on the set of Star Wars in Lando Calrissian getup. So. That's rad. That is very. I'm rad. so either stoked way, on that. Either way, that's rad. So we're not sure if Billy D is going to be uh, coming back as his um, character. Yeah. Lando. Will it work chronologically? Like with the time not that has passed, is is like as how he aged going to fit in the, the series chronologically well, I, though? That's how they're going to do it though. With yeah. The other characters. So. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I don't yeah. think they're going to try to make. Uh, they're not going to try to do like an Arnold Schwarzenegger thing, like what they're doing in the new. Trailer. Yeah, making them all CG young. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that by the way? That's yeah. Not to yeah. get off on that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, it, Did you see his like little? He posted like an Instagram video where he's like hitting on teacups. Dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Oh, that, it's real I love sick. That dude. Arnie's dope. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I love that. Guy. Um. All right, so Billy D. Yeah. So. Cited. I'm stoked for that. I mean, what else would he be doing there? He's just cosplaying Dude, on the set just for fun, <laughs> for funsies. Morale. Yeah, that's like, true. Can you, do, you do pretty good impressions. Can you do Billy D? No. Yeah. I mean, maybe if I like watch, if I watched the movie and then like did it right at, maybe. We'd have to have a little bit but of whiskey no. and we'd have to be like chilling. For sure. Dance pad. I'll try yeah. to, I'll I'd try have to have like a big banquet and stuff, just like yeah, yeah. yeah that'd yeah. be pretty cool. I mean, I'd be like secretly betraying you the whole time though. So. <laughs> That'd be really cool. So yeah, we're really stoked about that. This yeah. To kind of I didn't even hear about that yet. So really? that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm here for, man. To Lando, Lando Calrissian is like an awesome character in that universe. And he's like tortured, you know? Yeah. Like he didn't want to do it. He's forced to. He's got there first, man. Yeah, dude. That's <laughs> rough. Again, you might not be picking up all these references, but that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, go and watch Star Wars right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Open Empire. a new tab. <laughs> Open a new tab. Go to Empire Strikes Back. And yeah. Look up Lando and for all sure. Stuff will make sense. <laughs> uh, so now you have like 12 tabs open on your browser. So yeah, we should have people actually, um, you know, uh, even though you're going to see this at a later date, tweet us some questions about Star Wars because uh, we have a couple of contacts right now um, up in Hollywood that have some pretty cool stuff that I found out we are allowed to share a few okay. things. So tweet us some tweet us some questions. Um, we'll see what we can get into. And uh, we'll see what we can get into and find out. So we have a couple of things we can't say but uh, that we just found out, but... The whole Lando thing is pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, tweet us if you want any updates on Star Wars. Jurassic Park 2 is coming out. So, same mm -hmm. studios are working on those movies. Mm -hmm. right now, so, it's kind of like a good end. But, um, but, yeah, so what's this controversial thing, man? You're okay, so. What are, you, what are you doing? Everybody, everybody and their mom is freaking out about Walking Dead right now. Oh, wait. It's the thing. Another, do we have to do another spoiler alert? No. No? No, because this is just, this is an opinion piece right now. Okay. Okay. I'm very rarely am I, am I a purist. Very rarely am I like, oh, like I love Radiohead, but only their first two albums, man. Like I'm very rarely that way with things. Walking Dead, the only good season is season one, and season one is so good. What? So have you watched it all? I I have not watched the last season I, or this new season at all. I just it, it turned into a, like a like a rom com, not even a com, but it just turned into like a <laughs> it's like a dead. romantic drama, dude. It's like slow and it's I don't know, man. You it's need, you just need Chandler, man, there to like light, lighten the mood a little. They bit. need a Chandler. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I love that dude. Sorry. Um. So you're gonna hate me, but I have not watched Walking Any of it. Dude. <sighs> Again, don't don't be ashamed. I'm sorry, don't yeah, be ashamed. Just, I try every season. I probably watch two or three episodes. Okay. I just can't. I can't get into it, man. I don't know what. I'm not. I'm also not into zombies, though. That's that's probably fair enough. That's like excuse. number one. That's a good excuse for I'm sure. I'm down with a good story, and from what I saw, season one, one really dude. Season one is yeah. so good. But um, I don't know. Yeah. Man. Now it's like a telenovela, though, dude. Really? It's just. I don't know. It's so much about the drama between the characters as opposed you just to watch it in Spanish, and then it'd be like, one yeah, of awesome, you know, Spanish. Then you'd probably enjoy for it sure a lot better. You know what I should do? You know what we should do? 
Let's redub it in Spanish and release it as YouTube you videos. That? We're gonna redub yeah. Walking Dead. Actually, like super, so many people super are shaking their heads right now. Yeah, no. Like, um, Don't do dramatic. Like, do ah, Dios mío. Like that. <laughs> No, we won't do that. We won't. We won't. And do I'm that. It just I honestly don't not in an insulting way, but I don't care if I've offended you because <laughs> season one is amazing. Everything else is just it's a headache. It's a headache. It's frustrating to watch. Sixty percent of the audience just tuned out. Just turned it off. That's fine. And then the rest were like, he hasn't even seen it. <laughs> I'm closing all these tabs. Yeah. I don't believe anymore. Yeah. So uh, moving on, we're yeah. going to go to a segment now that is called Dizzy Doom Comic Boom. And it's where we talk about three comics, a mainstream comic, a throwback comic. We're just kind of like a classic, ran- we'll just call it random, just a random yeah. comic. Yeah. And then an independent artist, which is what, you know, again, the main point we're trying to do here. Totally. So um, let's get to that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dizzy Doom Comic Boom. All right, Gabe, so do you want to start off with the mainstream one? Yes. Okay, so our first comic book came out today. A lot of people are super excited about it. I know I'm excited about it. Yeah. You're excited about it? Yeah. I am talking about none other than this guy right here. This is Darth Vader, issue number one. Just came out today by Marvel. Dude, okay, so... It's crazy. Um, yeah, it's Star Wars. It's going to be awesome either yeah. way. Um, we were checking it out this morning. It's pretty It's pretty cool. I wasn't sure what direction they were going to go. I didn't want to know. I didn't do any research on it. I didn't want to look up anything. I just wanted to be surprised. It is so stinking awesome. I'm really excited about this series. It looks like it's taking place, and I'm going to try to get through this with no spoilers, so I'm trying to... Yeah, I'm because it's new, this. exactly, it's yeah. It's new, so no spoilers. I want you guys to enjoy this for how it was meant to be enjoyed. It's, it's going to be awesome. It's going to blow your minds. looks like it's taking place during A New Hope, so that kind of gives you a time frame of what's going on. Um, looks like Darth Vader was up to some stuff, man, that uh, not a lot of people... Uh, knew about or uh, were talking about in the movies, and it kind of gives this really cool overview of what he was doing around that time. And so this is not like alternate universe. This is like canon content. Oh yeah, this is this is in the same universe. Yeah. Um, this is. Oh, that's rad! I'm stoked for it. Up very well. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. It also kind of alludes to again. Hold on, I'm trying to think without giving away too much. It alludes to a lot of the reasons why Jabba kind of had some stuff out. For Jabba the Hutt had some stuff out for um, some of the main heroes of okay. the movie too, so that was that's really rad. Cool. Um, and yeah, it has a little bit to do with uh, some bounty hunting and uh, some hiring. All right, I, I honestly like not to be a jerk. I don't want to hear anything <laughs> yeah, more. No, 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 I'm not. I just want to hear that it's awesome and I should check it out. It's awesome for sure. Very good. Highly recommended. Uh, I was completely blown away. And uh, Brad, check it out. And also, we got one of the variant covers. Yes. Yeah. And um, and it's like bobblehead, like see. chibi style stormtroopers and Darth Vader. You can see this. Who's the artist on that one? Does it say it on, on the is, front? Uh, Gillian, Laroca, and Delgado. So let me see this guy. It's pretty sweet. You guys need to go pick it Brad. up. Brad, you can still grab it right now. I'm not sure if you can or not. Um, I think we got, was there four or five copies left when we went to the... Yeah, there was very few. Yeah, by the time you're seeing this, but you can, I'm sure you'll be able to buy the, uh, the collection soon. So, Definitely. Or you can get it online on um, Comics Craze yeah. and all that stuff. All right, I'm excited for this. Oh, yeah. Really I'm cool. excited so, for what this. What do you got for me, man? What do you got? All right, so I honestly, I will admit, it, admit that I do not know a great deal about comics. I love comics, and it's a, I love reading them, but I'm not huge. I don't have an extensive knowledge of comics. It's something I would like to, to gain, you know? And, I mean, we're talking about the different things about this show. Music, huge into music. Video games, I know all sorts of stuff about video games. Comics, that's one area of my life that I, I, I want to delve deeper into. So when you told me to pick one out, and we're in this comic book store, and I'm like, <laughs> you gave me way too much freedom, dude. 
That's okay. You gave me way too much freedom. That's okay. Man. You said throwback, and I was like, I saw all these old, all these old throwback, books, and I was just like, um, we can, we can call uh, whatever we want. So, so, I'm gonna call it the wild card. The wild I just card. picked something almost at random. Free battle cast of you. Almost. <laughs> thank you. Almost at random. Um, but here's what I got. What'd you get, man? Oh, nice. I got Batman the New 52. Oh, the variant. Which is DC restarted um, the entire DC the multiverse um, with the New 52. And this is number 36 of Batman. And I basically, I really, really like okay. Legos. And I really, really like the Joker. Wait, so this. Hold on, hold on. Pump the brick. Does anyone not love Legos? Does anyone not think the Joker's rad? Both of those things. That's true. They're like universally appreciated. Um, yeah. So everyone loves Legos and everyone loves the Joker. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, this one I picked out at random, and then I started leafing through it, and there's like some crazy, some crazy stuff going on in this universe. Um, yeah, the new 52. For those of you who might not know, um, it is a little bit different from the original sagas of the Batman or Dark Knight. That yeah, have. there's stuff going on here that I'm like, whoa, that can even happen. Yeah, it's not. It's not a big deal though. It's pretty. It's pretty stinking cool. Um, but there's a lot of stuff going on. The most intriguing thing that I'm seeing so far in this one, um, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give anything away here. In this storyline, and I haven't read any of the other ones in the series, but now I'm going to because I'm like, I'm like, what the heck happened to Superman? Superman's been poisoned by the Joker and is like, exhibiting oh, like dude. Joker characteristics yeah. and is like being controlled by him in a sense. He's like Joker Superman, and that I'm like, all right, I need to find out why the hell this is going on. Can you give a close-up of that? Yeah. Do you want me to walk up to the camera yeah, yeah, with yeah. it? All right. Okay. Superman. Let me find a good one. A good shot. So Batman's fighting King Croc in the beginning, and Superman is just looks... Totally B.A.? Yeah, dude. All right. Okay. This is a good one. This shows you Joker-style Superman. Is that, that getting picked up without... There you go. Nice. Not too much glare. Look at that guy. That's Superman awesome. Superman Joker. Um... Yeah, so I'm like kind of stoked on this, and it's it's something cool. These are new. Like this one came out January 2015. That's right that's on. this edition. So I'm like stoked to have something that I can like get started on. And this is only 36. I can blast through this in like a couple days, like maximum. You know. If you are a San Diego native, I mean, I know this is getting broadcast to people all over the world, but if you are a San Diego native, yeah, you could go to Villainous Layer located yeah. on Adams Avenue. That's where he picked up all these comics today. Shout They're out, super awesome. Yeah. hooked us up. And if you're an LA native, you can go to Meltdown Comics on Sunset for Boulevard. sure and uh, go say hi to anybody there and uh, drop drop a text say you were watching the uh, the D-Lot show and that you decide to come in and check it out so. yeah they'll give you a 100% discount <laughs> just kidding you don't get free books for mentioning <laughs> no they won't that'd be but, rad though but maybe we'll do that in the future yeah, yeah maybe we'll have some giveaways in the future we'll see um, anyway so do you want to talk about the independent yes, artist one now because this one artists. is like so intriguing to me Dude, and so interesting so so cool we're really stoked to have him on the show um, his his comic book on the show. Um, he is a local artist. His name is Justan McGee, and his company is Upper Mind Inc. So you can yeah. check out uppermindinc.com for more of his artwork, more of his stuff. He does a lot of really cool stuff around San Diego. He works with clothing companies. Mm. He's uh, he's done some artwork for me that's been super rad. Um, he's done a lot of a lot of different stuff. He's usually at ApeCon and at WonderCon. He has his stuff all over the place. This guy is a genius. So here's his book. This is uh, a super rad book. This is Restless Minds. Restless Minds, a comic anthology. It's so crazy, too. Um, I guess the idea behind it was getting a bunch of artists together yeah. who struggled with... Uh, here, you can flip through it. I yeah, read it. I took a look earlier, um, but... A bunch of artists together, 10 to be exact, who struggled with anxiety. So they all got together and made these comic strips of how they got over and overcame their anxiety. It's pretty stinking rad. Yeah. So um, he, uh, he has 10 different artists. There's a lot of really crazy artwork in there. Um, there I mean, really just, is, yeah. Just look, if you're, if you're not into comics or if you're if you don't think it'd be something you'd be interested in um you should just check it out anyways it's a beautiful beautiful book it's put together so well it's really cool it feels nice we were talking about that we're like oh this just feels good man this is a good feeling comic it does and, yeah uh, that's part of the, that's part of the magic you know you, you guys know that as comic book readers that's part of the magic the feel so check it out um, and i I'm love finding. all of the different art styles in it yeah, it's really cool. It is an anthology, um, yeah. it says on the cover. So 10 different artists um, contri contributing their work. And 
it's just great. So go support him. He's our uh, independent artist for the day. We're going to try to have him on the show sometime soon. It'd be really cool to talk to him. I'm, we have a lot more questions for him. Yeah. It'd be so great. Um, his name is Justan McGee. So go check him out. UppermindInc.com. I'm sure you can check out Uppermind Inc. on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, on yeah. Twitter, all that stuff. Um, yeah. So... Uh, isn't that sick, dude? It's really cool. I'm I like, know, he's kind of like, I'm gonna check it out. Right yeah, I'm, I'm like in, I'm in the moment here, and I mean, I'm sure you've dealt with some anxiety in your life. I definitely have. I've, I've gone through, suffered panic attacks and stuff. So this yeah. is like near and dear to my heart. Well, I think it's really cool too that he's doing this, and he's doing it from an artistic point of view because I, I mm -hmm. feel like, um, I mean, for me, music and art and all that stuff is such a great outlet, and a lot of people forget that, you know. It's okay to struggle with this stuff, you know? Yeah. We all struggle with it. And you don't have to feel weird about it. You don't have to feel awkward about it. You just, you know, you have your things that you do. And Figure out how to cope, yeah. Yeah. So this is a great outlet for a lot of people. And uh, just reading through it is encouraging to me. Be encouraging to you guys, I hope. And, um, again, I mean, how can you go wrong with something like this? And just the artwork is... Uh, is Artwork's rad. There's a lot of really, really, really cool pages on there. Yeah. So full color. The whole thing's in full color. Mm-hmm. Uh, 28 pages, I believe. Uh, something like that. I believe it's 28 pages. So it's it's a nice size book. It's great. Super yeah. great. So, um, yeah, guys. You want to get to our... Uh, Want to show my interview that we did with Mike Towery? Yeah. Want to get into that? Let's do that. Let's get into that. For yeah, sure. So this is a part of the show that we call Commander Echo's Guest of Honor. So, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you now, Mike Towery. Our guest has arrived. We are here with Mike Towery the creator and co-founder of Comic-Con. Which do you prefer, actually? Co-founder. Co okay. we got to give credit where credit's due. So, co-founder. So, I like that. Mike Towery, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going, man? Good. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Um, Dan and I are... Big fans. Pretty big Definitely. fans. Yeah, Definitely. so if there's a little bit of geeking out while you're here... I apologize. So um, for those uh, who don't know exactly what you do or how you've been involved with Comic-Con or Comic Fest, can you give a little bit of a background on uh, how Comic-Con got started and now Comic Fest? Uh, I know that's a large question. Yeah, well, in, in uh, 1969, um, uh, a guy named Shell Dorf moved to San Diego, and Shell had... Um, helped put on one of the first comic conventions, kind of multimedia convention, back in Detroit called the Detroit Triple Fanfare. And then he moved, he actually helped his parents move out here in 69 to retire. They moved into Claremont from Detroit. And then when, you know, it was, it was 60s California and he just fell in love and he couldn't leave, so he stayed. And so, um, you know, he, but he was interested in, you know, continuing to do what he'd been doing. He liked the whole convention thing, and you know, of course he loved comics and all that. So um, through an ad in a local ad magazine called The Penny Saver, he got a hold of Barry Alfonso, who was 12 years old and had put in an ad that he wanted to buy comics. And Barry Alfonso was 12? Barry Alfonso was 12. At this point. Yeah, Barry Alfonso wow. was 12. So, so shall, shall put... Um, uh, got a hold of Barry and said, hey, I've got some, you know, duplicates and extras to sell, you know, would you like to see them? So Barry's mom drove him over and, uh, <laughs> so you know, bad. Barry looked at his comics and, you know, uh, then he said, hey, you know, Shell, uh, I'm just a kid and I don't have much money. I really can't buy all this stuff you have. But there's this guy here, a local guy named Richard Alf, who just ha came out with an ad in Marvel Comics. And, uh, you know, he's buying comics and I'm sure he could, he could buy all your stuff. You should contact him. So Shell got a hold of Richard Alf, and Richard drove his 1954 Volkswagen Bug over to Shell's place in Claremont and was looking through his comics. And while he's looking through them, Shell's telling him about the Detroit Triple Fanfare. And um, then when they're all done doing, doing the business, Shell says, well, you know, um, Richard, do you, do you think there's any local fans in San Diego who would be interested in doing something like that, a convention like we did in Detroit, a comic convention? And he just said, well, I don't know, Shell, you know, I'll ask around. 
So he asked, I lived in the same neighborhood as Richard at that time. And How old were you at this I time? I was a 14-year-old okay. comic dealer. Wow. 14 year, a 14-year-old Mike Tower. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I, you know, I had, a, I had, a, I hadn't put an ad in Marvel Comics yet, but, but I, you know, I did had a mail order business and bought and sold comics and, wow. and, it, and uh, was, was your, was it a shop or did you do that? No, no, that? it was just mail order. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, and and um, um, Richard was in the same neighborhood, and so I knew him, and we were sort of like friendly rivals, and and he was sort of the leader. He was the he was the big businessman. He was seventeen. And and so oh, one the, of the big one of the big kids. He's a junior in high school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there was another there was another uh, uh, kid in our neighborhood named Bob Sork who was 16 and he was selling comics too. And so Richard talked to us, you know, and he and he said, hey, you know, I don't know, there's this guy. He's he's this old guy. I think he's like 30 or something, and and which is funny now, but you know, it's <laughs> like he's this old guy. He's like 30 or 35, and he wants to, you know wants to know if we want to help put it on a comic convention and you know i don't know if he's for real or not but are you interested yeah we'll go we'll go look so uh it, we ended up we all went over to shell's place and we in in, in uh, richard's vw bug and and uh, richard bob sork and i and barry alfonso was there and a customer of richard's named uh, dan stewart from escondido came down and so we just you know we we talked to shell about it and and uh, he explained it all and um, you know, we thought it sounded cool, but we weren't sure, you know, if we could do it. We hadn't done anything like that before. And, um, but we, you know, agreed to meet with him again. And so we went back and, and um, one time we went back, we're all sitting around and he goes, uh, uh, do you boys know Jack, who Jack Kirby is? Are you, are you familiar with Jack Kirby? <laughs> wow. And uh, we go, well, sure, you know, we, we'll put our hands up. Yeah, we know Jack. And, and he goes... Oh, okay. Well, so so how many of you have ever spoken to Jack or met him? You know, how, how many of you have ever talked to him? One moment. For those of you who don't know who Jack Kirby is, you might not want to be watching this. But if you want to learn something, Jack Kirby is one of the most influential comic book artists. Uh, I would say possibly ever, but it's specifically for Marvel. But um, he also did some other stuff too. But just little side note there. Yeah. So. Um, so anyway, he said, you know, how many of you have ever talked to him? And we thought, well, you know, that's like a crazy question yeah. because it's like he's Zeus living on Mount Olympus yeah. somewhere and we're just kids here so in San he Diego. So like Jack Kirby at that Yeah, point. yeah. Okay. So he was the number one guy. And so, you know, Fantastic Four, Thor, Captain America, all those great comics. And so you just thought, you know, how could we possibly have ever spoken to somebody like that? And then Shell kind of smiles and he goes, how many of you would like to talk to Jack? And it's like, we're all like, yeah. <laughs> and so then he, he made this big show. He got his phone out and it was like the rotary phones, you know. Little oh, you guys didn't email him? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like one of the rotary phones. So he makes a big show, he dials it, you know, and he picks up the receiver anyway, and then, you know, answers and he goes, hi, Roz. Uh, that was Jack's wife, Roz. He goes, hey, Roz. Yeah, I'm here with the boys. Is Jack there? Yeah? Okay, can you put him on? And then he shall, like, just hands the phone to whoever is one of us next to him, you know, and, and says, here. And you pick up the phone, and it's like, hello? And you hear this this voice that sounds like, I don't know, Edward G. Robinson or something, New York voice. <laughs> Uh, uh, talking on the other phone, you know, and it says, hi, this is Jack, or whatever, and he goes, well, you know, and so we're all like, you know, and we pass the phone one to one, and, and we're all like, oh, Mr. Kirby, uh, like, I, I really like your stuff, you know, and stuff. So, kind of so like, 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 like how we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, you know, so so we talked to him and all, and, and, and then after that, we arranged, um, he let us come up and visit him. He had just moved out from New York that year, and was the first big comic book artist to move to the West Coast, and and he was living up in Irvine at the time, and uh, so we all we rented a station wagon and we piled into it and we, you know, drove up to to visit him and his wife Roz made us hamburgers and so and awesome. and that's crazy man. And Jack was you know he's just, he was an amazing person. Everybody who met him just loved him, and he never talked down to you, even though we were kids. You know he took everything you know he took us seriously, and yeah. and he talked to us like like we were there to have serious conversation. He told us nice. about his ideas and what was on his mind and showed us his art and stuff that he had done as a, as a kid. And, mm -hmm. and uh, 
you know, it was funny too, the, the, when, when we walked in, one of the first things, Barry Alfonso, a 12 year old Barry, uh, when he goes up to Jack and he, and he says, um, should we call you King or Mr. Kirby? <laughs> Which was funny because you know, because Stan had like gave everyone nicknames, and so his was he was Jack King Kirby. So so Barry was like, well, I don't know, maybe we're supposed to call him King, you know. And so <laughs> so and Jack just he he didn't know what to say. He was kind of fl uh, flustered, and he just kind of said, oh no, wow. you don't have to call me that. So but anyway, it was wonderful. And a and after that, we I know this is a long answer, but no, anyway, no, after that, we thought, well, you know. If we can, if Shell can arrange for us to go visit Jack Kirby, we can go up there and, and do something as, as incredible as that that we never imagined that we could do, yeah. then yeah, we could do a comet convention. And so that's, that's how so it started. We decided to boost. Yeah, we decided, decided to go ahead and, and um, do it. That, that is awesome. So that's, that's like how it, that was the, the, the grassroots of, of Comic Con. Um, how quickly did it evolve into something? That it's that's more like today, you know, because I imagine it started very small, very. Intimate. Oh yeah, well our our first our first event was uh, March twenty seventh, um, nineteen seventy. It was a one day. We called it the the mini con, mm. and uh, we held it in the basement of the U.S. Grant Hotel, which was all run down at the time. It's it's really nice now that it's fixed up, but back then San, downtown San Diego was kind of not doing really well and. Yeah. And so, you know, they were desperate enough to have a comic convention, which, you know, <laughs> that, yeah, you had to be pretty, you had to be pretty, pretty desperate. But anyway, so they let us have, they made a deal with us that if we had our three-day convention there in August and paid them, they would let us have the basement for one day free in March. So, was this the city of San Diego? No, no, that was the U.S. Grant Hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, no, the, um, um. Yeah, so we had this mini con because we just thought, well, you know, try it out and just, you know, see how it works. Maybe raise a little money and and uh, get some experience before we do the three day, con the big three day convention. Yeah. So, so the the mini con we had, I don't know, a, a hundred, hundred and fifty people maybe, and um, still that felt huge for you guys though, right? Yeah. People coming to your first oh event. yeah yeah yeah, and and uh, Forey Ackerman came down. Mm. And he was he was and Mike Royer who was an inker he had inked Kirby and he inked uh, Russ Manning's Tarzan strip in the papers. Oh wow! And a uh, really good inker and 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 Forrest Ackerman I don't know if you know who he was he was the uh, um, he actually created cosplay. Mm. He was the first wow. he was the first person to wear uh, uh, cosplay to a, uh, well it was a science fiction convention in the yeah. 30s but he was the first and um, he created famous monsters of Filmland which was. You know, so important. So many of the 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 great creators in special effects mm. launched, got launched on that career path because they read famous monsters of Filmland. Wow! So That's it, so, rad. <laughs> so anyway, he he came down to our little our little event, which was you know which was amazing to us. And then in August we had the three day convention, mm. um, and Jack Kirby came, and Ray Bradbury was our science fiction guest of honor. Amazing story That's too. Amazing. Amazing story too, how how Ray Bradbury became our guest, yeah. um, which is also how Comic Con became nonprofit. In those Please. two things. You uh, you, you want to hear that yeah, story? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Ray Bradbury. Please. Yeah. Okay. We're well, make Dan's day right Seriously, now. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so Ray Bradbury, especially you know even at that time, he he had broken through to mainstream acceptance and mm -hmm. and and he was considered the top the top science fiction author. Yeah. Rightfully and so. and um, he was a noted lecturer, and and so he would go around to colleges, and and, and they would pay him to, to speak. Mm -hmm. So in uh, December of '69, um, he was given a talk out at UCSD, and so um, Richard and Shell had found out about it, and so they went out to to catch the talk, and he gave his talk, and. Uh, Afterwards, Shell had brought along a scrapbook of some comic strips that he'd cut out and saved because he knew that Bradbury was a huge comic strip fan. He'd been he'd been saving Buck Rogers in scrapbooks since he was a kid, mm -hmm. and um, so he, you know, everybody's standing around talking to Bradbury afterwards, and Shell passes the scrapbook up, and Bradbury looks at it and goes, "Oh, hey, can I keep this?" And Shell's like, "No, I just brought it here for you to look at." And he goes, "Okay." So they get they got talking about comics, and and so Shell said, uh, "You know." Uh, we're putting on a comic convention next year, and we'd sure like it if you could come as our guest. And Bradbury goes, oh, sure, I'd be, I'd be happy to come. I'll give you my, my agent's or manager's contact information. You can call yeah. them up. And, 
and um, I don't drive, so you'll have to pay for my train fare and put me up at a hotel and then pay my uh, customary speaking fee of $5,000. Mm -hmm. And okay. <clears throat> And so, you know, in 1969, $5,000 is probably like, I don't know, 35000 or something now. Wow. And, and so, oh, so you can imagine, Shell and Richard were like crestfallen because yeah. it's like, there's no way we have that kind of money. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't know what to do. And then Shell all of a sudden got this idea. And we hadn't really talked even about, like, how we would structure it. Would it be a business? Would it be nonprofit? Well, mm -hmm. we just thought, you know, like, hey, let's do a com let's do a comic convention without really thinking about those sorts of things. Yeah. And so, as we all do. <laughs> and so, so <laughs> Shell just all of a sudden just kind of got this little brainstorm, and he said, "Oh, well, you know, Mr. Bradbury, we're just some fans, and we don't have that kind of money, but we're doing this as a nonprofit event to educate the public about comics and science fiction and film." And so Bradbury goes, oh, well, in that case, I'll come for free. <laughs> and he did. Nice. He, he came for free. Oh, he, yeah. gave, he gave what's maybe my favorite talk I've ever heard at a convention. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it's actually, I have it online. I have a, I have a website called ComicConMemories.com. ComicConMemories.com. Memories.com. Com. 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 Memories. I'll be there the second you leave. I'm and it's got, I've, <laughs> I've got, I had the, uh, I had my old real old real tape recorder I recorded yeah. um, some of the talks. And so I had them digitized a few years back and put them up there. So the Kirby's speech is there and, you know, wow. and Bradbury's awesome. speech and, wow. and some other, yeah, some other stuff. That's amazing. That is amazing. So, and then... So that was still pretty small time at this point. How many attendees oh, did you have the three-day one? Uh, oh, boy, maybe like 300, something okay. like that. Now, were, okay. you, were you guys pretty blown away by that, or were you, were you like, oh, we need more? Or like, what was your yeah, attitude yeah. for like, the attendance? For well, we, th we were very happy with very, it. Yeah. yeah, we were really happy with it. Awesome. Um, you know, you I mean, we didn't have anything really time, to compare right? it to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was 15 by then. Yeah, like, well, 300 people just showed up to my event. <laughs> That's so crazy. And, awesome. And you know, the, the world was so different for us fans back then, too, because we were pretty much universally despised mm. as, you know, like, who, who would be still reading comic books over the age of 10 or something like mm. that? You know, there was obviously something wrong with you. So you weren't accepted. I mean, even science fiction fans who were looked down upon by the public at large, even they looked down on us. Really? Wow. Yeah. Really? And so... Um, there was no internet. There was no long distance phone calls were too expensive. So you guys didn't have a lot of Star Trek stuff at the convention because because well, there was no Star Trek then. The, I mean, we well no, we didn't have Star Trek stuff back then. Oh, okay. I yeah, no, I mean it's like Star Trek fandom actually. There, I mean, it got going. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, John and B. Joe Trumbo came to it Comic Fest last it year. It wasn't there, that, but we uh, weren't. Yeah, we we uh, like merchandise and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, that came along. The, okay. the Star Trek actually got really involved in um, Comic Con in '73. Wow. Okay. Um, and then uh, the, there was a local group called Star which had its 40th anniversary uh, a couple of years ago. And so, um, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so, but any, anyway, back then, uh, we, we, we had no internet, we had no email, there was no, um, you couldn't even call someone long distance, it was so expensive. Yeah. And everything was pretty much done through the mail and printing, you know. Um, there was, like, even even just, and, and for instance, for one thing, like in conventions back then, a big part of them was the movie program. Mm. Because you, you didn't really get a chance, there was no cable, there were no DVDs or, or even VHS tapes. If you wanted to see a movie, you had to get the TV guide out of the newspaper and you had to go through every day and look and circle the things, you know, oh, King Kong's showing here, you know, yeah. or Frankenstein's showing there, or, or Forbidden Planet's gonna show here, you know, and, and, and so a lot of this stuff, you either didn't see it or it was really rare that you would get a chance to see it. And so at conventions, they would get all the, all the science fiction, horror movies and stuff you liked, and, and you have them there, and you could just you know, geek out and watch all the movies. It was very cool. Um, it, was a, it was an environment where you were like with your own people and your own tribe gathered together, and, and everybody thought what you did was cool, too. And so it was, it was a wonderful experience for us, and it was really important for us to have that. And honestly, that's that's one thing I feel Comic Con still has is that feeling that you're with your people when you're at Comic Con, yeah. and it's like just everyone's so happy to be there, and mm -hmm. it's just like it's like Disneyland, but times a million, times a thousand, <laughs> like just 
infinitely more amazing than that. It's, I don't know, just everyone's so excited and happy, and they're where they want to be. They're like, they look forward to it every single year. And it's gotten away from focusing on comics primarily, for sure. It's, it's now, it's movies and video games and, and all that kind of TV shows and um, and that's what's really cool about San Diego Comic Fest, mm. is that's that's what that's about. Well, that, how similar to what Comic Fest is now, which is your new convention, a couple years old at this point. Um, how similar is that to the early days of Comic Con? Well, I know the the first one we really consciously tried to make it a lot similar to the ones that we had at the El Cortez Hotel in the 70s, which mm -hmm. for people that have been to, going to the con since the early days, the ones we had at the El Cortez, it's sort of like the gold standard or the golden age of yeah. Comic-Con. And um, it was another, it was a hotel that used to be the premier hotel of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And then by the time of the 70s had rolled around, uh, they hadn't maintained it and there were newer properties elsewhere and it was kind of run down. Yeah. So they Where didn't- Where town was that? Uh, it's downtown. Okay. On, on Cortez Hill. <laughs> Makes sense. And, oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And so um, they, they were, again, they were willing to have us there, even though we weren't a big revenue source. But, it, you know, they would take anything, I think, by that time. And they would kind of look the other way when there were shenanigans going on and whatnot. Oh, you really? know, and so it was fun, you know, to be kids <laughs> and, you know, sleeping in the movie room or I like whatever. How classy he is. Like, he, I mean, shenanigans, <laughs> shenanigans could mean a lot of different things. <laughs> And uh, I like how you just like, this point, so just slip, probably, kind of look the other way when there are shenanigans going on. <laughs> nice. I'm going to start using that if that's okay. <laughs> that uh, that kind of leads to another question uh, someone uh, wrote in from, or tweeted in. Tweeted in, yeah. I've, I've we been say struggling tweeted. with this all day. Is it, is it tweeted? Is it tweeted? Um, someone asked... Um, what do you think the pros and cons are of comics being so accepted and accessible these days? Pros and cons. Um, well, I'm not sure exactly if, if they mean by accepted because comic, comic sales are actually probably lower than they were back when we started Comic-Con. I mean, they, it used to, you had comics that would sell a million or two million copies regularly, and now it's, what is it? hundreds of thousands at best, and that's probably yeah. The Walking Dead or something, and nothing sells like a million copies anymore. And that's more because it's a mainstream, people are watching the TV show. And there's so much, yeah, there's so much competition for kids' attention now, especially, yeah. and, 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 and plus when, you know, when I was a kid, it was, the comics were on every newsstand, they were in drugstores, you saw them everywhere, they had the, they had the wire racks. So uh, the spin the spin racks and and but now comics are sold in comic stores which you only go into if you're already interested in comics yeah. so I don't know if that's that's you know a contributing factor as well I mean comics comic characters are hugely popular in the movies so maybe that's maybe that's what they meant but uh, I mean I think comics are healthy they're they're I think you know they're the it's still viable they're still doing well and as like a uh, as opposed to when you were growing up, people aren't really made fun of for reading comics at this point. In my high school, yeah. there's all kinds of kids just reading comics like randomly around <clears throat> at lunchtime, and like those kids weren't like nobody's kicking dirt on them. Like you're reading comics, like yeah. there was no like trekkies walking around like Psh, comic books. What dorks? <laughs> like, no, it's, it was a totally accepted thing. So I, maybe that question is like it, the fact that that is just part of culture now. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's not. They're not dorks anymore. They're just people that are reading comics because they're cool. Yeah. So, I mean, we've seen the impact that it's had on cinema. I mean, if you think <laughs> about it, I, I was listening to um, Kevin Smith, and, and he, was, he was talking about how uh, he was saying, yeah, back in my day, you know, you, you couldn't get chicks by going to comic conventions and stuff. But he's like, mm. now you can. <laughs> it's like you can totally, you know, be playing Definitely like can. a online video game or going to a convention and stuff so like that whole nerdism is so much more accepted but and we've all, like you know we've seen it in cinema with especially you know no offense to dc i love dc but i mean marvel's just killing it right now mm -hmm. and for the most part it's good quality stuff that they're yeah. putting out you know and it's uh there's so much more there's some they're so fun you know they're honoring the characters i think mm -hmm. pretty well um but the storylines and again i can't really uh i don't remember a time where it wasn't it was kind of weird to be into that stuff but 
Um, I can only imagine that how many people would have thought, you know, that we'll never see a movie. You know, we'll never mm. see a Hulk movie. Yeah. You know, we'll never see a Thor movie. Like, who would have mm. thought we would have a Thor movie? You know, that was a two of them. They're blockbuster hits. I'm at three if you're counting the Avengers. And um, yeah, it's just it's just kind of crazy. I mean, I think um, for me to kind of roll off that question, I think a big pro would be having those movies. For I mean, some people disagree. I know there's some hardcore fans that strictly just like their comic books the to stay purest, on yeah. the paper, and that's it. <laughs> they don't like the movies. I have a, a couple of really close friends that do not like any of the Marvel movies, any of the DC movies. Um, and I understand that. You know, I totally understand where they're coming from. But uh, I'm a fan too, and I think you know, it's such a cool thing when you can read these guys, and then you can go to the movie theater and sit back and just enjoy a full adventure i mean i i think that's i think that's awesome i think yeah. that's super awesome. are you a fan of the movies so far or? the ones that are well written yeah yeah i like which, how you which are that. some of your favorites then oh well you know the first the very first sam raimi's spider-man mm. when that came out when i saw that in the theater and that came out i thought wow you know <laughs> there it is the first finally a comic book on the big screen mm -hmm. that was the game changer too that that's was what really yeah. changed the game i mean x-men was okay. X Men mm -hmm. did okay, but that's the that first Spider Man movie was, was really what pushed. Yeah. And I think got people w waking up like, oh wow, this is superheroes can be badass again. You know? mm -hmm. so, and the movie studios are like, oh, we can make a ton yeah. of money off of this. So <laughs> keep doing this. Can't forget about them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but I, you know, I like the Captain America movies and the Avengers and and Avengers. the Guardians was really fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. That was so much fun. Yeah. And I think that's. Again, not to like harp on DC. I love DC. You know, for those of you who are watching this, you know me. You know I love DC comics. Yes. But uh, Marvel has figured out how to keep the fun and mm -hmm. keep the action and keep the story and keep the keep the point of the character. You know, and mm -hmm. keep the soul of the character. And I think that's something DC needs to needs to work on a little bit. But um, love them to death. I'm still enjoying their movies. I mm -hmm. can't complain about the movies. But um, but well, DC is also a little bit darker, though. yeah. So it kind of makes a little bit sense. But and I guess Daredevil's coming out on Netflix, right? Yeah. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what yeah, they do on that. that trailer that looks pretty mm -hmm. cool. Are you a Darede uh, Daredevil fan? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, got we some more questions. Yeah, we got some questions. People are uh, tweeting in right now. They're tweeting into us. Let's right see. Now. Um, <laughs> Evolved from a convention like SD Comic Con to the smaller convention SD Comic Fest. Why is this connection so important? Um, That's such an open-ended question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure exactly about the, the the connection thing, but as to why we did Comic Fest, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I mean, Comic Con's wonderful. It's, you know, we love Comic Con. We're really proud of how how big it's gotten and the the kind of attention it gets that we could have never imagined yeah. that it would get. I mean, that's awesome. That's very cool. But you know, when it, because it's so big and so successful, it also loses something. It, you know, it, it's different from the kind of experience you can have at a smaller event that's uh, maybe not so focused on the the A list red carpet kind of thing with very the commercial. with the Star Watchers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so you know we, we we miss that, and so we thought, well, you know, there's room for both. They're 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 not competing. They're just two different kinds of experiences. Yeah. Some might might prefer one to the other. People would like both. I've thought about it as sort of like, you know, concerts, like like music concerts. You got you got the big stadium concert with the the you know the huge seating and the giant crowd and the <clears throat> the uh, pyrotechnics and explosions and yeah. and jumbotron screens and all that stuff but then also you can have like a small club concert where yeah. you're right up close to the band and you know you're there with other fans who are really into the band and and maybe after the band after the concert the band comes down and hangs out with the fans and you can just talk and and that sort of thing like maybe over at the casbah here in town or something yeah. like that and and so you know that's valid too and so those kinds of experiences uh, there's room for both 
And just as there is in the music world, there's room for both in the, in the, the convention. So we're, sometimes people actually try to, especially the press when we first started, they wanted to make it sort of like, oh, you must be against Comic-Con now, and you don't like Comic-Con anymore. And, and they would actually... That in, the, in the San Diego Reader, actually, the, yeah. the first year. They would try that, and, and you know, and they'd actually be kind of disappointed that we weren't going to go there, and, and that we weren't anti Comic Con. But you know, we just we never have. We've always just had good things to say about Comic Con. And in fact, the last Comic Fest, our fan guest of honor was John Rogers, who's the president of Comic Con, mm. and has been for, for for many years, and has been the person at the uh, he and 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 um, Faye Desmond, who runs Comic Con day to day. Um, have really been in, in, in charge with a lot of other good people. Of course, Jackie Estrado runs the Eisners and, and Shout whatnot. Shout out to Jackie. We talk online <laughs> sometimes. Hey, Jackie. Um, they've, you know, they've really looked after Comic-Con and made it a viable, ongoing concern that, that is going to keep going and, and, and it built, you know, built it up into what it is, is today. So, you know, my hat's off to them. Yeah. Very cool, man. How did your role at Comic-Con <laughs> change over the years? Like, how actively involved were you with it? Um, around the point where you started Comic Fest, like right before that, were you still no, stuff? Were you no, no. Um, I was I was actively involved for just under probably four years, okay. something like that. Um, in my final year, I was I was chairman mm -hmm. of of the con. It was our first convention that we had at the El Cortez, mm -hmm. and it was uh, I think it was it was the year that Comic Con really kind of became came of age and became something different special yeah. uh, from all the other conventions and and um, so I was 17 then so I don't know I think I'm that might that might be that might That's be awesome. the youngest comic-con chairman I don't know but um, it was a, it was such a fun event and Roy Thomas came out he was uh, <clears throat> he was the editor of Marvel at the time and he was the first fan to sort of realize the dream of becoming a big-time comics pro yeah. And because he had he had actually helped Jerry Bales, who was probably the father of comic fandom, to uh, get this uh, one of the the key early fanzines going called Alter Ego, which is still being published. Roy Thomas still publishes, it, oh, uh, still say, edits it. Like, oh, it couldn't be the same. Is yeah, it the same old, yeah. They crazy. revived it after Roy retired from Marvel and whatnot. Wow. They revived it. That um, is totally amazing. Yeah. That's so insane. so anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So Roy came out. He was the first big name. Uh, comics person from back east to come out because back in those days too it's again you know there was no internet or anything everybody yeah. had you had to pretty much unless you were jack kirby and you could kind of make your own terms uh you you really had to live back in new york or on the east coast mm -hmm. and so roy made the trek out and, and he came to the convention that was you know that was very cool we had bob clampett you know the uh, beanie and cecil and the the Warner Brothers cartoons. You remember, it's a Bob Clampett yeah, cartoon. Yeah, yeah. You know, kind of do uh, to wrap things up. Where do you see Comic Fest going? Um, if just kind of coasting with what you're doing now and keeping that that energy, or do you want to see it grow into um, another beast like Comic Con? No, or, it's. Or do it's, you want to keep it? I mean, I know that's yeah. the point, obviously, but yeah, are you just kind of going to focus on doing what it's doing now and just kind of yeah there's i mean there's no reason for us to i mean comic-con already does the big exactly. convention so well mm -hmm. and they're you know they're in town <clears throat> they're in town here and you know I don't, I don't know there's all the talk about them leaving or not but i would imagine even if they left it would just mean that they would have the big convention somewhere else but they would still have a san diego convention i'm almost certain they they would do that so maybe comic fest can take over <laughs> no, I, don't, I, th I think I think Comic Con will still have a San Diego convention. We're gonna start the rumors again that you guys are you know, <laughs> opposing sides, <laughs> like the Raiders and the Chargers or something. Yeah. So. So, but no, it's it's like we we want to. I mean, we'd probably like to grow a little bit, but not be so large that we couldn't be in one hotel venue. Because that's part of the special thing is like everybody can be in the same location and hanging out, and the guests are there. Because that's a big yeah. that's a big part of it is that you can actually hang out with the guests that come to to comic fest because they'll be in our cafe or they're at other panels or just you know walking around it's all very low-key everybody's happy to talk to anyone there so so that's great i think some of the things moving ahead we want to you know work in music more you know you you uh, <laughs> helped us out with that last yeah, year that was awesome kind of see so much fun. more where there's the crossover between music and comics and science fiction. A little bit of what we're trying to do here, too. Yeah. Uh, same kind of thing. Dan and I were both fortunate enough to go last year, and I think both of us were 
a little blown away, actually. I mean, how we I think we were all setting this up today, actually. We were talking about how it was crazy. It was like, oh, you know, there's Neil Adams. And, uh, <laughs> oh, wow, okay. You know, and uh, it was... It was just crazy, you know, and there was no, um, nobody seemed to have a chip on their shoulder. Um, it was, it was awesome, you know, it was so awesome. I got a chance to talk to um, some members of the Siegel family, which mm. was, yeah. I mean, as a hardcore Superman fan, I, um, I, I yeah, I, I choke up just talking about it, you know, because I was just like, you have no idea, you know, how much your dad the character that he wrote had an impact on my life you know and so that was amazing for me and just how easy it was and i was thinking about comic-con and that would virtually be impossible Mm -hmm. unless you had some super secret top notch pass you Mm -hmm. know to get back and talk to these people and so um i am a hundred percent on board with comic fest again nothing against comic-con i still love comic-con but uh yeah, Comic Fest was just a very, almost supernatural experience. You mm-hmm. know, so I can't wait for next time. Cool. So, so yeah. You want to plug uh, a little bit of Comic Fest and let the fans know um, when it's gonna be, uh, or do you not want to share right now? Well, probably. Yeah, you know, wait till we got the 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 date settled okay on that because we're making a couple of changes date wise Sounds and that good. sort of thing and and so but you know sdcomicfest.org is our website and and we should have some stuff up there probably by the end of the month cool sdcomicfest.org so so but we're definitely doing another one and and uh, you know hope everyone will come hope you come again play again digital I, lizards of doom <laughs> I am there man 100 yeah. percent just let us know. So we'll be there. So, uh, any more questions? No, I just want to say it's really nice talking to you, Mike. But now I feel like I haven't done anything with my life. I'm, <laughs> I'm almost ten years older than you were when you chaired <laughs> Comic Con. So, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I think you're doing okay. Yeah, you're doing fine. I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm sorry, buddy. Well, cool. I'll buy you a drink afterwards. Yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, cool, man. <laughs> so, thank you so much, Thank Mike, you, for coming sure. on the show. Glad. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for inviting me. Of course, man. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you for watching, guys. Digital Lizards of Doom show episode one. Live at Meltdown Comics. That's right. And don't we have like a password we're supposed to give people? Yeah, so we're going to give you a password for this week's episode. The password is Comic Fest. So if you come into the AC Lounge within the dates of the 25th of February, to the following Wednesday, yep. you'll get 50% off on your first round of drinks by using the password Comic Fest. That's right. So come on in, AC Lounge in North Park. Come check it out. They uh, let us do our show here. I don't know why. They're crazy. graciously, yeah. So um, they're crazy and gracious. <laughs> they're crazy and gracious. Craziest. <laughs> that's craziest. We'll have to use that next time. That, that's we used it right password. now. We used it right out of the password <laughs> next time. Password. <laughs> craziest. <laughs> don't worry about spelling. Just say it. Craziest. Thank you guys so much for watching our show. Yeah, really appreciate thank you. it. More to come. More awesome stuff. More awesome guests. So uh, thank you. You guys have a great week. This is the D-Lod Show at Live at Meltdown. Signing off. Peace. Later. This has been the Digital Lizard of Doom Show live at Meltdown. 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 Meltdown.